The arcade was a big part of going on holiday with my dad. We'd have to find the nearest arcade just to go and chill and relax. The main thing we did do was racing games. We would literally lose hours just racing each other constantly. It just kind of made us click that bit better. It just connected us in a different way that I feel like most people don't get a connection with their parents. Now those memories kind of get clouded a bit because I think of my dad as, you know, he was ill, he was poorly. Hugo's relationship with his dad was amazing. They were like best buds from day one. He just adored him. Uh, when Craig first told me they'd found a lump, um, I was very suspicious and, and extremely worried that this wasn't going to be good news. From an early stage, it was just it was just vomiting and stuff like that at first, and then he got hospitalised, and we discovered it was pancreatic cancer. Craig and I had separated prior to his diagnosis, but we shared Hugo 50-50. So I decided to move in just to see him constantly. It was way too much for me to be downstairs um, and seeing him being ill. So instead, I would just go upstairs, play a game, and he would join me online. So I would almost have that perception of he's still fine, he's still able to talk. I would just be able to have the old memories of him come back instead of having to think about his illness and him being unwell. I was definitely finding it hard to go onto my Xbox and just not see my dad online. I would just kind of sit by myself on the Xbox without anyone to talk to. I just kind of felt that no one understood what I was going through. I'm alone. I don't have anyone else my age that's going through this. It was the worst emotion at the time. Because of your donations, Hugo was able to find a place where he wasn't alone. He joined the Stand By Me group programme, which brings together children and young people who have been bereaved. For the majority of the young people we meet, there will be an array of emotions there. Often they come in with anxiety. They worry that their feelings and emotions are wrong. Did anybody feel um, jealousy? Yeah, yeah, feeling jealous of like, oh yeah, your family's all, you know, all there. You're, You're not missing anyone. Yeah. Your one's not there. yeah. As soon as they walk into that group and they realise that actually what I'm feeling is normal, it's OK to feel like this, and these other people in this group are also experiencing those feelings and emotions, they start to relax. I could talk about it a lot easier with other people. I could talk about it to my friends. I felt I could kind of go back to life a bit more. It became a just group of friends, basically. It just became a nice, relaxed thing that you would go to every week. It didn't feel like counselling. It just felt like having a chat with your mates. It was nice. As the group work programme goes on, we look at those enduring connections. We know that that person will never be with us again, but they will always be with us in, in other ways. Me and my dad always used to race in Forza against each other. Some of his times on some of the tracks, I still can't beat. Like, the fact that I'm never going to beat his record almost feels like a good thing. It's just like, part of him will still be there, 